Well, Cedar and the kids are gone for most of this week, so I'm trying to get everything done with the downstairs bedroom and bathroom out in the shop. But I still want to do an accent wall before I paint. So after thinking about it and discussing this with my lovely wife Cedar, I decided not to do the crazy chicken wire and straw drywall texture that I wanted to do on that wall in that downstairs bedroom. But I do want to do some sort of an accent wall using this 1x12 rough sawn lumber. And I'm going to try and clean this wood up in such a way where it looks really good by the time I'm finished. I'm going to use caulking and clean the wood up before I paint it the same color as the rest of the room. By adding the ribs to the sides of the rafters and the corrugated tin in the ceiling, naturally it's going to take me a lot more time, but I think the end result will be worth it. As I said before, I'm going to go over everything with some caulking before I paint it, and then I need to add the insulation before I put the corrugated tin in place. I basically do my drywall the same way I do body work. So after putting it on and sanding it off until I've got all the walls flat, it's finally ready for the final details and then the paint. But taking the time to do the corrugated tin in the ceilings naturally has cost me a fair amount of time. It would have been so much easier just to cover the ceiling in drywall and be done with it.
Even though there are probably a dozen sawmills within about a hundred mile radius of where I live, it is still more cost effective to use drywall to cover the walls and the ceilings than it is to use this wood. But that doesn't mean that I can't take a few minutes, cut these 1x12s into some strips, and see what I can come up with on that bedroom wall. When I use this wood inside, the one thing that Cedar has asked me to do is to take the time to sand it down so she can actually wipe it down and clean it with a regular rag and not get a splinter in the process. I tried to sand all of this wood down enough to get rid of any potential splinters while still leaving the circle saw marks from the sawmill. So that pile of 1x12s that I picked up nearly two years ago now that was supposed to be used to finish the siding on the back of the shop but now I've used up on a dozen different projects around here. That wood has been sitting, covered, and dried perfectly so now because it's straight I can use it for things like baseboard, window casing, and now this accent wall. So on that bedroom wall, I want this accent to look similar to everything else around here in that board and batten style, but I don't want to use any more lumber than I have to. And like I said, cedar simply wants it to be smooth so it can be wiped down if it ever does get too dusty.
Using my belt sander, I cleaned up all the wood and I tried to leave all the beautiful saw marks at the same time. One of these days I'm going to pick me up a nice stationary belt sander as well as a 12 inch planer and that should save me a lot of time. Hey Reed, you want to meet baby Reed? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Double trouble. How do you like that? <laughs> what? What do you mean? How do you like that? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats. He's so so cute. So tiny. They grow up fast. Got proud dad over here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alex can. Is this just the drywall? Okay, you can your panel right now. Well, what do you think? I think it's a bedroom out in the shop, and I don't know that I need to put any more effort into it than I already have. I think it's fine, don't you? So you're just going to paint white I'm going to caulk everything and paint it all white. So this is the headboard pair. And how come you did it right here? How come you did it that level? Um, eight feet didn't seem right to me, especially if the tin is going to be right here, I guess. I don't know. I just like, that's kind of an old-fashioned, uh, you know, like the craftsman homes have that little finish on the... I don't know. I, just, I feel like it was just plain. The, the wall was just very plain, and so I wanted to... No, I, I love it. I love it. I just think you should have went to the top and put the trim at the top. Well, cedar approved, so it's time to get ready to paint. Now, in my broken English, I sometimes struggle to find the right words to describe what I'm trying to accomplish with these projects, but, but what I did tell Cedar is I wanted it to be five feet tall. She suggested taking it all the way to the rafters, making it eight feet tall, but to go that high would require at least 30% more wood, which I don't want to give up at this moment in time. So I'm gonna make it five feet tall and hopefully she likes it. But I will tell you this, that pile of one by 12s that I paid nearly $1,000 for a couple of years ago would now cost me about $1,300. So as much as I love working with the stuff, I hate to use it up. One of the things that is not my strong suit is taking time with the details in situations like this. Slowing down and filling all of the nail holes with caulking is not my favorite job. Okay, so I am almost out of caulking and it is my son Reed's um, 11th birthday, so I am gonna go take him to birthday dinner while Cedar goes to um, Callie's track meet. And then I think tomorrow night we're gonna go to the batting cages and actually celebrate Reed's birthday. So here we go to dinner. Cedar and Callie are at her track meet, so Reed and I decided to go do a little bowling for his birthday.
All of this wood, even as much as I sanded it and cleaned the wood up, it's not perfect. So using the caulking to go over everything and fill in all the corners and the gaps and the nail holes, it really pays off in the end. And again, as I said earlier, this is not something I find a whole lot of joy in doing. But the difference between a good paint job and a subpar paint job, I would guess comes down to caulking. Gas station fun. <laughs> Been sitting in the car for too long, huh? Since you were at Tracy's. With all of the caulking now done, the very last thing that I want to do before I paint is to get all of the insulation in place. Because this is fresh drywall, I'm going to do two coats of primer, and once the primer dries, I'm going to do two coats of an eggshell finish in, you guessed it, bright white.
So all that I have left to do is to mask off the window, the door, and the floor, and then I can put down the first coat of primer. Well, as much as I don't like to paint, if I can use my paint sprayer, it's really not that bad, but it's super important that I take the time, tape everything off properly, so when I do start spraying, I don't have overspray marks all over. And as much as I've been enjoying the warm weather as it's been drying out, of course, right as I'm getting ready to paint, a nice little snowstorm is due to set in, so I've got to keep the shop warm. Well, I'm getting the bedroom and the bathrooms out here finished up in the perfect time because as I've said before in many different videos, if you happen to live in a small town, the best time of year is the middle of the summer. And we love our summers up here. Well, after having a couple minor problems with my paint sprayer and getting everything cleared out, the primer went down perfect, no runs, and the drywall is soaking it up. If I can get the paint to go down as good as the primer did, then this paint job should turn out perfect. But I've had the windows open all night and the shop's cold. The only downside to the paint sprayer is I can get in a bit of a hurry and if I'm not careful I can have some thin spots that can come back to haunt me so I try to take my time to get the coverage down right the first time. And then even after I was done I went and grabbed the wife and brought her out here to make sure I didn't miss anything. Well, the paint laid down perfectly and I can't see any runs, but before I start pulling paper and tape off, I need to let this sit overnight and make sure it's good and dry because it is cool outside.
Well, it turned out great. We ended up getting like two inches of snow last night and it dropped down to about 25 degrees uh, for the low. So it's not, some of the paint's not quite dry. I'm gonna get uh, a fan moving some air around in here, but this is done. Uh, thank heavens, the hard part is done. Anyway, we will see you guys in a week. Hopefully we're doing something warm outside. I'm thinking next week I'm going to get on that excavator for a little bit. And I've also got to start cutting some trees down where the new pin is going to be uh, for the deer um, before the trees butt out too much. That was kind of one of my goals is to try and get up there and, and whatever trees I am going to fall this year, uh, I wanted to do it before they started to butt out. So anyway, thank you guys for, for stopping by to see what we're up to. Uh, we will see you guys in one week.